higher level. I appreciate if you can help me here. It's, a, it's actually something that you probably think that you know and you all know and you probably studied in high school and many things. But even though it's simple, many, many people get it wrong. It's about inductive reasoning. I think I mentioned to you that there are kind of different approaches to formal verification, interactive and non-interactive, but they all share inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is actually a basis of everything. So, uh, and I'm sure, okay, so basically this is not known, to, uh, not new to anybody here. I'm sure there's the idea of mathematical induction goes back to the um, French mathematician Pascal. Basically, you have a property that you want to show that it's hold on all the integers. So instead of showing that, you have to show two things. You have to show that it holds in the base case. And then to show that if you take an arbitrary state that it holds, then you can actually go to the next state and it holds. And that's actually, that's essentially what the power of tools like Sertora and for that matter, other tools like interactive term prover, it's all the same, based on the same principle. And this principle is simple. You can formulate it in first order logic. It doesn't matter, like you were saying, for everyone, if you have the property holds, and if, if it ha happened that every time, whenever the property holds, it holds in the next step, then you know that it holds on all the integers. This is very simple. I try to... Uh, illustrated pictorially here, you start with this one, you start with an arbitrary element, you assume that, and then you prove that it's holding the next step, and then you know it is holding. So this is the idea, but even though it's so simple, many people, including myself, we get it wrong a lot of time. And when you work in Sertora, you are likely to get it wrong, and actually when you work in, in tools like Cork, you are likely to get it wrong, or, or Isabel, or Kay, whatever you want. And the, 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 the beautiful of working with tools, the tool will catch you. And it's frustrating, but the tool will always catch you, assuming that, but this is part of formal verification. <laughs> so let's take a very, very simple example. And it's actually a trivial example, uh, which was constructed by a, a, stu a former student of mine, but it's, it's, a it's a trivial example. You probably don't know why I'm bothering you about it. So the idea is you have a ball, and the, the ball actually can be, uh, there are four players in the ball, and A can pa pass it to C, okay, and B can pass it to D. And the ball starts at A, okay, that's a very, very simple game, it's not Ethereum, it's not Solidity, there are only four players. And you ask yourself, can the ball, if the ball starts at A, can the ball ever start, it reaches D? Tell me. Is it possible for the ball, if it started A, to reach D? No. So can you prove this by induction? Is it inductive, the property that the ball never reaches D? Is it inductive? What do you guys think? Yes or no? You want to uh, raise your hand or say? You have this, uh, I think if somebody wants to, oh, it's here. You want, does anybody want, yeah. Nurit, maybe. You have to push like this. We can try to prove that the ball stays uh, between A and C, that so it's true at the start, and uh, following the following the heredity, we can say that it, it stays true. Right. It it's, it is true that it stays true, but when you prove things by induction, it's not enough that it's true. You have to somehow only prove it by induction. So the idea is that. The, the beautiful of inductive reasoning, you cannot assume that it stays true. And the idea is that the property, can the ball stay in D? So this is a property. The property says it never stays in D. But this is a property that you cannot actually take into account the initial state. When you prove the basic property of mathematical induction, that when you are proving something about PM plus 1, you don't know that PM is 1. So basically, you have to say that when you are starting an arbitrary state, is it the case that if you start with an arbitrary state which never reaches D, in the next step, you still never reaches D? Is that true? No, so I, I was thinking you, we try to prove another property. Okay, which is? Which is that the ball is between A and C, and C either at A or either at C. So we say that it's true at the start, obviously, 
I see. Okay, and then Ex and then from that we can conclude that it's not at D. Excellent. So you so I think w what's your name? Uh, Quentin. Uh, what? Quentin. Quentin. Yeah. No, actually we know you are from Morpho, right? <laughs> Yeah, okay. right. So Quantin has it right. The idea is you have to strengthen the property. And often when you prove function mathematical induction, you have to strengthen the property. So you are, and actually this will happen to you in Sertora too. You have to, you, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. The tool, the, 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 co you have to strengthen the property. So that's, so let's go back. So basically let's figure out mathematically. Mathematically the property that we want to say it's not in D. And we formulate it by induction. So we formulate it in induction, and we want to prove the property. If 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 it x n is not d, will it be the case that in the next step it will still not in b in d? So this is something that we ask the prover. So is this property true? Is it the case that every time when the when the ball is not d, it's still not in d? What do you guys think? Is that true? You are. What do you say? So we are trying to prove a mathematical property. You have a sequence, okay? And here is how the sequence is defined. The first element is defined uh, 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 to be A. And then the next element is defined exactly according to the previous element. And then you ask yourself, it's, a, it's a basically a question in mathematics. Is it the case that if Xn is not D, then it's Xn plus 1 is also not D? So that's not the case, exactly. And the, and this, the, the tools like Sertora Prover, it's annoying. It will give you an example. It will give you an example. And that's the beauty of it, but it's also the risk of it. It will give you a counter example. This sometimes in mathematics is called counter example to induction because it doesn't necessarily mean that your code is right, is wrong. And it doesn't even, it means that the property is not inductive. And, and, and this is the case. And in fact, you can strengthen it. I think Quentin mentioned one way to strengthen it. The way it is strengthened here, it says that the ball cannot be in B and cannot be in D. And this is a property which is inductive. And then the tool will be able to show it. Okay? So that's the idea. The idea is that you want to strengthen it. And we know that it often there is sort of the, a unique way to strengthen it, and you, want, you don't want to strengthen it too much. You want to strengthen it just enough to make it inductive, and hopefully to make it also understandable. Okay, I'll give you more examples. So just to capture, you see here several examples of invariant. So the first one we talked about. There are, of course, things which are not correct. Okay, there are things which are not correct. And you see there are actually things, and that's actually the risk of working with tools like Sertora. We work with our customer. Sometimes the customer is a bit frustrated if they don't understand. And they can actually write rules which will pass, but will not mean anything. And I think tomorrow you'll talk of vacuity. So you can write a rule that says, for example, the, the ball, you see, if the ball is either in one place or another place, then it stays in this place. So this has nothing to do with the code. And of course, the tool like Sertora Prover, essentially it converts into a mathematical formula. So the tool doesn't actually know if the mathematical formula is not satisfiable, the tool is happy. So you as a human, you have to be careful. In fact, the tool is checking you that you are not proving properties which are vacuous. Uh, so maybe I can just illustrate it pictorially. Think of your program as a transition system. You basically start from initial state and you grow it. You grow it, you grow it, you grow it. And when you want to prove something about your property, you want to prove that it never reaches the bad state. So we want to prove that never your, your contract is depleted or something. It never reaches the safety property. Then this is the case. We want to say that the system is safe, and it's, you notice that this is a property that means that all the states, all the reachable states are safe. So again, let's talk of a very, very simple program. You have this program here, and you see that here there is a property that you start x is 1 and y is 2. And you see that every time x is incremented and y, and, and y is also incremented. And you want to prove that, that x is odd. Is it the case that x is odd? What do you guys think? Is x odd here? It's probably too boring for you, but still, bear with me. It is. Is it inductive? Is it inductive? Is the property that 
can we prove if x is odd in, 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 in one iteration, will it be still uh, remain odd in the, in the next iteration? No, Quentin is saying no. Excellent. So this is not inductive. And you see the tool is giving you a counter example to induction. Okay? And you see the tool is giving you these states and this will happen with a Sator. And what is it that the tool is missing? Can you tell me what is it that the tool is missing? And it actually it's, it's something that will happen, we see it in real code, even though it's a very, very simple code that has nothing to do with solidity. So what is the tool missing? Sorry? Initial condition on Y. Not initial condition. It's missing something else. You are, you are right that is missing Y, but it's not an issue of the initial condition. It's the idea is that Y here has another property. Okay, so we need to strengthen it and about y, okay? And we need to know that in, uh, x is odd and y is even. So we need to find out, and this has happened often, you have a complicated system, you need to understand something about the correlations between the system. It's not the initial condition that we care about, it's something about the inductive. Maybe again I want to, so that's the idea. If you make this invariant now, uh, x is is odd and, and y is even, then it's inductive. And in fact, the tool like Sertora and other tools, they can prove that it is inductive. So you strengthen it enough to be inductive. Okay, so maybe just to capture it pictorially. So you see in the, in the blue part, you see the, the, in the blue part, you see the reachable state. And in the green part, you see the inductive invariant. And one thing to notice about inductive invariant, and that's crucial here, the inductive invariant often includes more state than the reachable state. And that's the beauty of formal verification. We don't actually want to, and we don't need to understand the exact state of the system. And it's often very complicated and not useful. And actually, once you change the program, you don't want to be actually, you want to actually capture the invariant that actually needed to prove the safety property. So that's the idea. You have this safety property that you want, and you basically want to want you want to you want to separate between the red state, the bad state, and the, between the blue state, which are which are the good state. So you ended up with these green states, and the green states they cover more, okay? And it's this is the idea, and this the property that we want to is closure. What do we mean by closure? Well, usually sometimes it's called consecution. The idea is that if you apply a transition, you stay in the same state. So this is good, this is good, this is also good. You see, going from bad to, to good is also good. What is not good? It's not good to go here. It's not good to go from a reachable state outside. Okay, so that's the idea. This is exactly the property that we want to capture, which is called inductiveness. And again, it's go back to mathematical induction. There's nothing new here. But we are doing it about code, and, and it's, it's often confusing for people to get the right inductive claim. There are techniques for inferring inductive invariant. There's a lot of methods about it, not yet implemented in Sartoa, implemented in other tools. But there are methods that you can actually infer sort of weakest uh, 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 strengthening of invariant, but I'm not going to talk about it. So maybe I want to close by an example that is very, very simple, but still an example that illustrates the idea of inductive invariant in smart contract. I'm sure you will see it in the workshop, more interesting examples. So here you see you have a, a bank. I think maybe you have seen it. And there is a, a deposit and there is withdrawal. And uh, just to simplify things, thank you. Just to simplify things, the the, we have a bank account, which is crazy. It's not interesting. Actually, in Sertora, you can do much more interesting things with ghosts, but I didn't want to go into that. So we have an account with two, with two people, okay? And uh, just a very, very simple account. I, uh, uh, and, and what we do here, first of all, I'm going to show you the transition system. It's basically, you see all of these states. Every time you execute a state, you move to another state. So you think about it like these are the states of the blockchain. And every time you execute a transition, you go to another state. And this is infinite state system. It's exactly what you have seen earlier. And there are, of course, more and more state. I'm not showing it. 
So let's took a very, take, uh, take a look of a very, very basic property. It's not very interesting, but I'm just using it to illustrate things. So suppose I want to show that in the, ba the balance here, when I add a number, there is no overflow. Is that correct, first of all? Is there an overflow here? Can there be an overflow? Uh, assuming the, the the Solidity compiler does nothing, it, can there be an overflow? The, not a version that insert this check, whatever. So can there be an overflow? Yes. Who said yes? Uh, and which maybe you give them the 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 mic. You have to push down in the on the bottom because it will be green. How can there be an overflow? You have to push le and wait a little bit. Okay, but uh, if there's already balance, and you add uh, the max uh, of the UIN 256, you you wanna have overflow. Okay, so what is your name? Victor. What? Victor. Victor said there is overflow if there will be a max if the number is too high. Does anybody object to that? Look at the code, please. Look at the code. In the code, there is a statement here. There is an interesting statement. There, yes, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you pass to. Uh, well, it checks that it doesn't uh, go over because uh, otherwise uh, the total plus amount would be bigger than amount. Exactly. Yeah. So Quentin is helping us here. There is a require statement. So the require statement actually checks that. But you notice actually that's, so for a human, this is very, very simple. A human look at it, and usually I guess an auditor, a good auditor will probably say there's no overflow here. But Sertora, we only understand the things which are in mass here. Okay, so it's not like we have, that's, a, that's our strength, but it's also our weakness. We have to understand things in terms of mathematics. So we have to prove to the tool that there is no overflow here. And the trick is that we have to tell the tool the property that Quentin had in his mind, okay? So we have to tell the tool, you see, we have the tool to tell the tool that balance of Alice is less than total, balance of Bob is also less than total, and then because of that, and because you have the required, and later on tomorrow, Thomas will explain to you, the tool is actually fairly complicated, and it understands all the EVM semantics, in fact, that is nice. So the tool will then actually, will actually be able to prove that this doesn't create an overflow. But what is the problem with the property that balance is less than Alice, and ba balance of Alice is less than total, and balance of Bob is less than total? Is this property inductive? Is this property inductive? So this is the property that we have, which is a true property, but is it inductive? Is it the case that if the balance, if all the people is less than total, and if I execute an, an operation, is it still the case that it, the balance remained less than total? Somebody wants to help? No? Some people are smiling here. He, he, he's waiting from the previous question. He's, uh, he's being kind. So it's for forgetting your name. Uh, I, b I believe this property is inductive because uh, we start from the initial state that everything is zero, and then the only uh, the induction step is either uh, de deposit or withdraw, and both maintain this property. Interesting. So let's see what the Satora tool believes. So the Satora tool believes it's not inductive, and let's see who, who is right, you or the tool. So the, so here is the counter example to inductive that the tool uh, uh, brings. The tool actually brings the example. Alice has 40 and, and Bob has 20 and it's less than, it's less than, you agree? This is less than, right? It's, it satisfies your property. And then you execute this with row. Sorry, I can't read. With row Alice. And then it goes to the page that you have uh, 2 and 20. And then it's violated. So what's wrong? What's wrong? Why is the tool is wrong or you are wrong? Uh, I, 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 uh, I, 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 you have to push in the bottom, Nuri. 
I believe that the tool is wrong because we started from a state that but is you start, unreachable. It, 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 when you think of induction, the, the most bad thing is to think of a starting state. The tool doesn't know about start. The beauty of induction is that we move, we move infinite things into a one step. But we, this one step has to be arbitrary. You cannot think of the basic step. That's the basic thing that we study in high school. The first step is not interesting. It's, of course, you have to check it in the first step. But the idea is that a property is inductive exactly if it's inductive in mathematics. And this property is not inductive. But does the, can this uh, be reached? Sorry? Can, this, uh, the, can no, the first state be not, reached? No, but it's not an issue. It's an issue of proving by induction. We are not trying to, the only thing is proving by induction. And the idea is this property is not inductive. And you can use tool like Koch to find it's inductive, tool like Sartori, it, it's not inductive. How do we make it inductive? Please help me. What do we have to tell the tool? There is something about the code that we have to tell the tool and it has nothing to do with initial state. It's something very basic. What's wrong with this counter example to induction? Somebody wants to help us. Hi. Uh, so we have to add another property that said that the total is uh, the, cur the sum of the current balance. Yeah. Ex <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Eugene. Eugene. Eugenio. Yeah, Eugene. Eugene. Yeah. Thank you, Eugene. So Eugene is helping us. <laughs> so we have to actually, so this is the thing. You have to write this property. We have to tell the system something that we know as a period, that basically total is equal to the sum of the balance. So that's basically what we do. We actually tell the system, and so you have a way to tell the system that the total is equal to the sum of the balance. Once you tell the system, of course, it will actually be able to prove it's inductive and it will uh, get into the step and it will prove that it's inductive. Okay? So that's the idea. You have to strengthen the property to be inductive. Again, it has nothing to do with Sartora and it has nothing to do with automation, but this is the, the, the idea of working with mathematical induction. So then we can prove the property. We can prove things like the opposite. We I'm showing you a kind of a proof tree, but it doesn't matter. And you can prove also the inductiveness. Tools like Sertora, all these inductive proof, it actually happens off the shelf. The SMT solver is doing it, is discharging a formula. Of course, it can time out if it's too complex, but essentially all this inductiveness proof is, is done off the shelf. And if you work with interactive term prover, then you as the human, you have to explain how it's inductive. That's the only difference. You have to actually explain this how inductive, depending how the tool you work. In Sertora, you rely on the SMT. The SMT solver actually is trying to find a counter example to induction. If it finds a counter example to induction, it's great. If it finds a proof, it's great. If it time out, it's less great, okay? So that's it. Uh, basically in the Sertora, there is invariant, you see, you write this invariant. There is the syntax, you write invariant, and then you can uh, write API. I guess you can only use pure functions, right? Or, or you, you, you can use functions which are not pure. I don't know, Nurit will explain. Yeah, so you can only use pure, pure functions. View functions, sorry, view functions. But you can use, like, like Eugene, you can write total, you can write, I, I didn't want to use, but you can use sums. You can use actually because sometimes you have to write very powerful things to make them inductive. And, and that's the idea. Uh, just to, to notice that invariant are strong, if you add the transfer, I guess Armin showed it, but the idea is once you add the transfer and you add the wrong transfer, then in fact the stronger invariant that Eugene proposed, it actually now help you to discover the code. So usually writing stronger invariant is a win because actually if you capture the right properties, not in only that it's inductive, it's also captured the property that you want. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, and if you correct it, and of course you know there are a lot of bugs. This is uh, uh, showing you here the BZX bug. So of course there are cases that people violate this, in, this inductiveness and in fact it's not all of them, but you have seen in the sushi trident, in the BZX, the, the breaking this environment also means that you are, you are, you are actually uh, 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 getting a, a security rule violation. And maybe just to point out to you how strong it is, I pointed to you again to the MakerDAO recent finding where they basically 
found that the basic invariant of the stable coin is broken. And actually, they asked us, they didn't understand how our tool check it, because, they, because this, this, in, this invariant is broken after many steps. But our tool is just checking one step, and this is the beauty of induction. It's, it's going from a, one arbitrary state into another arbitrary state. We never reach reason about the, the initial state. We only reason about an arbitrary state, and that's the difference. If you want to take the core difference between a formal verification and, and, and analysis, or basically uh, fuzzing or concolic execution, is the fact that we don't start, we start with an arbitrary state. And of course, as Armen and Thomas show you, you can add a require. You can actually restrict it. But the beauty of the tool that if you start with an arbitrary state, is an arbitrary state, and there is nothing hidden. So basically, if you start, it never talks about the, rich, the initial state. It forget the initial state. The only thing which is important about the initial state is to make sure that the, the environment is there. But once we check it, we forget about the initial state. And we can start here. We can start in Venezuela. It doesn't matter. We actually always, and, and forget about it, if you think of initial state, you are not in the formal verification mode. Uh, uh, I'm going, going backward. What am I going? Is the screen? I don't know. Uh, OK, so just giving you, I think you will hear more. I don't want to go. There are a lot of interesting advice about DeFi. Maybe I just want to uh, uh, point out, I think, uh, that there are different things between a property being correct and a property being invariant. And, 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 and if it's in inductive invariant, it's more than being correct. It means that it's maintained by the induction. And actually, this is the thing that if you want to take something from formal verification, it's an interesting concept. And a smart contract developer I think thinking of inductiveness, and actually as a programmer, I think Dijkstra is the first one who said that actually programmer doesn't understand inductive environment. I think it's the basic property actually to learn, and sometimes people start algorithms. I understand that it's very hard when you have complex code, but when you are thinking of, of an algorithm, often it's interesting to think of what's the inductive environment before you start coding. It's not realistic, but you have to find its inductive properties. And there are ways to make inductive properties you have seen ways by making it like Quentin, making it stronger. You can make it weaker. There are ways to make it inductive. And the Sertora Prover is just one automatic tool to check inductiveness. If you want to look into other tools like Daphne or others, there are other tools to check inductiveness. The Sertora Prover is essentially one tool to check inductiveness of bytecode. That's the idea. Thank you very much. Yeah, so all of these is, these are invariants maybe uh, that we have from customers. I could say that one of the lessons that we learn in the Satora is that we get actually excellent invariant from customers. And also another thing that we see, which is pretty interesting, that we need to explore more is that there is a network effect. Many of the invariants that you write for one customer actually it tends to be either similar or something uh, almost the same in another customer. So because, and that's very, very useful. And also we, 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 when we are seeing that when we are discussing with customers, actually this environment, sometimes they capture, it happens often to, uh, often happens to us that we ask the, the, the customer, what is the environment? And before we even go to the formal verification, the customer will say, wait, our code is wrong. So, because even thinking about this environment is eye-opening, as opposed to thinking about initial state, thinking about something more general. And these are examples that you, you have here, and I think that Nurit probably have more examples. You, you will show later tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, so there are more realistic examples. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thanks.